I'm in the Essentials Classic layout. I'll reset the workspace to make sure we're all set here. Next, what I'll do is go to File, New, and I'm going to create a new document. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with something very simple. Go with a print. And I'm just going to change the orientation to portrait. It's really up to you as far as what type of layout you want to work with. Okay, so the next step, I'm going to create my circle, and there's a few ways in how I can do this. We just will click in a certain area, and once we click in the area, it allows us to define the size of it. And I want to do something that's going to be around 300 by 300. And from there, I have my shape here and place this directly in the center. And from there, I'm going to make it a deeper red. So on the inner part, I'm going to knock out the shape with another color. So I'll click here, add another color here. And I'm going to make that one black, making it a little bit larger, holding the shift and option, overlapping these two. And similar to what we did last time, click to minus front. So now I have that portion that's here in the back. And now what I want to do next is I want to add the remaining parts. I have that ring. And then the next shape that I had before, I went to a rounded rectangle. And the rounded rectangle is what I had that I was using for the actual tablet itself. So and that works well for me. I'm going to change the color of it and the color I can go as far as the spectrum of being able to use that but also at the same time I can begin to look at it in a swatch type of view. So right now I'm going to go with more of like a darker gray color for it right now and as far as the rounded corners of it of this shape here I can select and I can click on the dot here and it allows me to round it off a little bit more to give it more of that look that I'm looking for. Okay, so I have that shape there, and inside of that shape, what also I'd want to do is I want to have a rectangle inside of it, just to give that illusion of the actual screen that's inside of here. So I'm going to have that as black. Okay, and then as far as the other part, I have my ribbon that's there, and I'm just going to put the actual main portion that I have for the ribbon that's going to go across. And now I have the basic shapes. Now, what I'd want to do from there, as far as the ribbon, of course, the ribbon has that modification that makes it look like it's actually a folding piece behind there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead to the star tool. And inside the star tool, when I drag and create the star, that I can use the up or down arrow. So I'm going to go right down to just a regular triangle. And with that shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that one a lighter gray color. So now from there, I'm going to take that triangle here and I'll place it over here to the side make it a little bit smaller what's going to happen is that triangle is going to be used to kind of create that illusion of the ribbon that we're creating here so I'm going to create another square I'll make that a little bit larger here bring it back so it'll connect right with the bottom of what I already had there and as far as the color of it of course I need to change the fill color of it so that the color will be black as it was before and now as far as the layer of it this layer here it needs to be further behind. So there's a couple ways on how I can do that. I can go to right click and I can arrange it and I can send it to the back and then from there it's actually going to be behind there. And from there that pretty much works for me. And as far as the shape here I'll do the same thing and I'll grab the top part of the ribbon so I can actually just have it kind of come up a little bit more and it gives a little bit more of a realistic appearance. And there's some more modification we can make to it a little bit later on. But now I have this path and I have the other path. And what I can do with these two that I've created, now what I can do is I can select them both and I can group them. One I can just go ahead and I can option drag and create another one and I can flip it around. And by doing flipping it around, what I'll do is I right click and or control click and go to transform reflect. And reflect, what that will do is it'll bring me to a starting point where I can actually flip this vertically and by flipping that vertically then from there I can actually drag it over here to the other side and do the same thing as what I had before. I may have to make a slight adjustment to it perhaps but overall it gets me in the same location that I'd be working with. So I've selected all of these and I want to group them together. You have them all selected and then from there you can go to object group. And by grouping them together this is my ribbon and it's kind of like a layer within a layer that I can make the further modifications to these if I need need to but at the same time if I need to make an adjustment overall to it as far as the size is concerned or anything like that I can just select that group and I can move it around as I need to. The next part I want to do is select the gradient so I'm going to select the actual shape here and I'm going to make sure I'm selecting the fill for this portion and I'm going to click to add the gradient here. So looking at this gradient tab that automatically appeared from here what I want to do is I'm going to change the way in which it actually is going to flow so I can see that I have the black part on the left side 
white side on the right and I don't want it to go necessarily from the darkest directly to the brightest at the brightest point I'm going to double click here because I want it to be a little bit dimmer and as you can see that along these lines these are all different grayscale values here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a little bit darker I have that and now the adjustment I can see how it gradually changes so I'm gonna bring it over a little bit more here clicking on this diamond at the top and I can adjust how quickly it goes from one to the other and at the same time I can also adjust the angle of it also so I can actually click on it and I can make it more of like a 45 degree angle or in this case I go to negative 45 and it allows me to give a different type of feel to what I have here that's the first one now the same thing I want to do with the other layer here behind I want to do the same thing where I will click on it making sure I have these the fill layer selected select gradient and as far as the opposite I can actually click here to reverse gradient and I'll reverse it but in this case I kinda like how I had it going horizontally from left to right and the same thing I have where it's gonna be from going from the darker to the lighter portion um, this one here I don't wanna have it as I don't wanna have this as bright on the right hand side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here and on this side double clicking I wanna have the second side a little bit darker not as dark as the other one but just a slight difference between the two go with my rectangle and I'm going to create a box in it. and the last part what I'd want to do is typing in the words or the letters that I want to have here so going to my type tool I know that I wanted to have I wanted to read digital literacy and then from there I can specify as far as the size and the font and things of that nature um, I know that I do want to have the text as white text so it'll stand a little bit more but as far as the actual font I'm gonna go to look at something online I like this digital kind of look to it digital literacy I like the italicized but I'm gonna go with the regular here I'm gonna click with I'm gonna click on the actual activate which means that now when I click to activate what will happen is Adobe Illustrator will begin to receive these fonts from the creative cloud and sometimes it may take a moment but I know that I have the font that's called ethnocentric that I'm going to be using here so now what I can do is I can go back to here and I can see that now the fonts have been activated and from there I'll go here and now inside of my library I have the ethnocentric font here and that kind of works well for the digital literacy I think that'll work and what I'll do is I also will take the shape itself and make it extend out a little bit more just so I have enough room for I want to add a little bit more to the appearance here now the appearance you can find it inside of properties and I click on the FX and allows us to add different type of effects specifically what I'm gonna do is stylize and add a drop shadow when I click on drop shadow it allows me to make modifications to it I'll click on the preview so I can see what it looks like with what I'll be doing and I'm looking at it and I can see it's adding separation because the shadow is going to give the illusion of depth but at the same time I have blur and as I reduce the blur to something that's a little bit more like two points you can see that now I can see the cast shadow from I guess what you would call artificial light here and I'm going to change the Y offset I'm going to change the X offset a little bit just so it'll stand out a little bit more now right now this is CMYK that is the actual color space that I'm working with which is more for print in this case the the badge generally it's going to be displayed on web or it's going to be used and perhaps in email um, closings and such like that you actually will have this as badges that you can insert into emails and such but what I want to do is I'm going to go to file and the actual document color mode I change to RGB but anyway you go to file save as and when you save this document I'm going to file save as and I'm going to save this as digital badge and I will finalize it. The same route would be going to file, export, and we want to export as because we save our files in a shareable format. So just in case someone doesn't have Adobe Illustrator, they can actually um, save. So digital badge.png, export that as well. And right here, this one does support transparency as before you have the option to change the preview of it. Um, this works out well for me. I'll hit OK and then I'm good to go so there you have it creating a digital badge in Adobe Illustrator hopefully you've enjoyed this and hopefully this will be beneficial as you continue to produce your creative work inside of the software thank you for watching and looking forward to connecting with you in the next tutorial hi everyone thanks for watching click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange and click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos